back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I was surfing Facebook today and I came across an anniversary model I don't think I've ever heard of before. I've seen many a guitars that look like this one, but not quite with these exact specs. Okay, so this is a 2002 50th anniversary Les Paul. Now sometimes Gibson will do anniversaries for many different things. So sometimes it's like when Gibson first officially started in 1894. Sometimes it's just from the introduction date of a particular model. And that's what this one is because 1952 is that first official year of the Les Paul. Back when it used to look like this. So what did they do to honor the original gold tops? They did this. <laughs> a Koa topped Les Paul custom. Okay, so Koa, typically you don't find it in solid body electric guitars, but you can find them. Even in the Gibson realm, if we go here to reverb right now, type in Koa Gibson, we can see one that we're talking about today. You can see a whole bunch of brand new 68 reissues with Koa tops. I mean, what kind of store has how many? 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them? Wow, that must have been their own signature run. That's all I've got to say. That's Eddie's Guitars if you're interested in one of these. 68 reissues, they are pretty nice. But other than the Koa top, there's nothing really too special about these. And there's also been regular Les Paul standards. I think they look best when they're natural, like this particular one right here. But sometimes they try to give them a cherry sunburst color too. Given the choice between the two, I'd probably go with the natural, but it does add some unique elements here. But anyways, if it was just the Koa top that made this thing special, it would not get its own separate episode. But this is a flamed figured Koa top. This particular one looks very similar to Maple, except for right here you get that characteristic Koa wood grain. But we got 57 classic humbuckers in here, a golden ABR1 bridge with likely a lightweight aluminum tailpiece also done up in gold. Looks like we got some interesting knobs. I'll have to see if I can find a close-up photo of these. But to realize just how special this model is, let's continue diving in further. And we can do that by moving on to the fretboard. So just like a regular Les Paul Custom, this is an ebony fretboard. But you're going to notice those inlays. These are abalone. Typically, a Les Paul Custom gets mother or pearl. It still has the iridescence within the light. Some guys like it, some guys don't. I'm kind of on the fence about it. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the guitar. I think for this one, it's a unique spec. Though, ultimately, I probably would have preferred mother or pearl. But you're going to notice six different cloud inlays for the first half of the fretboard. But then they either ran out of room, didn't want to make them small enough, or just wanted to do something different. They had three block inlays here, and similar to like a 2550th anniversary Les Paul, they cut the inlays off after the 17th fret. Was that a throwback to the 2550s? Because that celebrated 50 years of Les Paul in the music business and 25 years of the Les Paul model. Let's just go ahead and say it is because it kind of adds more canon to this model. <laughs> so block inlays, yeah, those make sense for a Les Paul custom. But where did these things come from? Once again, acoustic models. BC Rich guitars also have something very similar on some of them as well. But if that's not fancy enough, let's continue on here. The face of the headstock, kind of like the 2018 Abalone Custom Les Pauls that we talked about a couple of days ago, this one also had an Abalone Gibson logo with the custom diamond on the headstock. Seeing this outside of an art guitar at this point in time was pretty uncommon. But we also have a brass truss rod cover on here. And check this out, Grover Imperial Tuners to make this thing look even fancier. These are kind of once again a throwback to high-end arch top guitars. They would always get those fancy tuners. But hold your breath for the back. Yeah. <laughs> Check that out. You get the golden backplate covers, but this entire guitar has a maple body. Now, I tried to do my best research here to make sure that is in fact what it is. So if I'm wrong, please correct me. But to me anyways, this looks like a single one piece heavily quilted maple back. And to make things even crazier, take a look at the neck. It's a three-piece neck. You almost never find that on a Les Paul, ever. Once again, that's kind of an old arch top vibe type thing going on. So this thing really encapsulated so many different models within Gibson's offerings over the years. But here's one that George Groon sold at one point in time. Kind of like the Koa top a little bit better on this one. But you can see all of these just have beautifully figured three-piece maple necks. So that's two pieces maple with a center seam of walnut. 
but the back of this one also appears to be one piece and heavily figured. Here's a great side profile view that you can see that maple wood grain is including the figuring. It doesn't look quite as nice as like when they do the veneer, but it is interesting to know that it's maple. Like I've seen Karina guitars that have a similar wood grain going on and then they also put the koa top on them, but this appears to be something different from that. And you can even see the maple wood grain showing on the side. Sometimes when Gibson does maple on the back, they actually just have back veneers and then they cover the sides over also. For example, here's another one that we can look at. But when you look on the edge, that's pretty clearly maple wood grain in my opinion. So I truly believe that these were maple, which is just absolutely crazy to think. And on this website, they listed the specs as one piece figured maple. Since this was birthed in 2002, an original Gibson thing just doesn't exist on the internet to look at. And on the back side of the headstock, they're labeled anniversary, 2002, and then the number of production. They only made 50 of these. So this particular one is the 10th out of 50. That's probably why I haven't seen too many of these. Likely because I see the Koa top and think, ah, I've seen the Koa tops enough. It's nothing special. But I just happened to dig further in on this one and be like, oh, okay. But I wouldn't mind checking one of these out in the future. But these are not cheap guitars. This one sold in the neighborhood of eight and a half thousand. This one was listed around 13 and all these other ones just to say sold. But just in case unique quirky specs were not quite enough for you. Another fact that kind of stands out about this one is they went all out for the case. I mean, we're talking they went absolutely crazy on this thing. And then here's the case for your case. <laughs> I think Gibson did this on a couple of guitars in the early 2000s where they would give you a cover for your case. That's just how special these things are. Now this looks very similarly constructed to like the Snake Pit era. Gibson cases, they feel a lot bulkier, more protective. They were really incredibly well made. This one has the larger latches onto it even the locking combo lock, but they've got the great handle that never breaks off. So I guess you could also say this is likely similar to like the Les Paul Supreme cases, except for this is a little bit before their time. But what I really like about the case cover is they actually branded it 50th anniversary right there. And if you must have your hands on one of these now that I've uh, let you know that they exist, there is one at Guitar Showcase in San Jose, California. They want $12,000. The market just seems to be all over the place, but this one, it's got some interesting wood grain to it. I've yet to see one that has any significant player's wear on it, so all of these must have just been collector's pieces. So once again, you can see the case wrapped inside of its own little gig bag right there. I'd be curious to know if those are actually wooden knobs or if they're just plastic. They might be ebony with a mother of pearl topper. That'd be my best guess looking at these photos. And ooh, wow, that one has a really great side profile view. I think that's the best one I've seen out of the six or seven that I pulled up for this video, which isn't half bad considering there's only 50 of these things made. Yeah, that's a nice example. But maybe that's the sacrifice. This one has a kind of a weakly flamed back. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nice. But coming off of crazy quilts, especially like this particular one, it can seem a bit lackluster, but this really does remind me of like a V-Less Paul at this point. But the one good thing is a few of the video samples I've been able to find, whenever they have that crazy quilt going on, they generally do not have a lot of movement in the light. So if you just like the bubbliness, yeah, you're good to go there. If you like something that you can take out of your display case and move around, you know, this thing might actually look a little bit better in person. It's kind of interesting to see how the neck is just a little bit more of a lighter color though. But man, did they actually get figured walnut for the centerpiece or is that just wood grain? <laughs> I guess it could just be reflecting the light as well. But yeah, I would say that's a pretty nice piece if you want to own them. I will put a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. That is a channel supporting affiliate link for Reverb. This one also appears to be complete. I'm not sponsored to tell you any of this. I'm just letting you know. If you need one right this second, you can buy it. It is yours, complete in everything for 12,000 bucks. And it's number 30. So to end out tonight's episode, let's go ahead and play a small snippet of Guitar Showcase's video of one of these. <laughs> The only question left, would you rock the 2002 50th anniversary Les Paul or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below, 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.